Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Look, if it if it's truly life-threatening to avoid pregnancy, then I think you really need to consider whether or not sex is a part of your marriage anymore. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, the Catholic sex and intimacy podcast for women. My name is Ellen Holloway, and I am a Catholic speaker and coach who specializes in sex and marital intimacy, and I am on a mission to help you expand your understanding of the beauty of sexual intimacy and grow in holiness through the gift of your body. Today, we are talking about how do you find peace when sex and family planning don't go as planned. Being able to let go of our need to control family planning allows us so much more freedom in our sex life. When we are constantly fearful of pregnancy, we aren't able to bring ourselves freely and fully to the act. Or on the flip side, if we are constantly focused on when to have sex in order to maximize our chances of conception, our union might not be as free and full as it is designed to be. It's in our human nature to want to control these things, and it's all over our society that it's our job to control the outcome of sex. I remember when I was first learning a method of NFP, I was hyper-focused on controlling the outcome that I wasn't allowing sex to be a unitive act. I wasn't actually getting to know my husband through sex. I was focusing on doing everything right. There's no peace in that situation. So what does it look like to be at peace with family planning? Does that mean we have to all become providentialists? We're going to talk about these questions and more in this week's episode of Charting Toward Intimacy. With me, I have Kathleen, and today Hello. we are talking about the peace that comes from knowing that our God is a good father, mm-hmm. and he is only going to give us that which we need for our sanctification. Yeah, And so everything that happens in our lives is ordered toward that. He only allows things to happen if they're going to help us get to heaven. Yeah. And there is a peace in that. Now, I'm not saying it is easy <laughs> to live that out. No, not at all. And I have to tell you, so the the place that this podcast topic came from is Kathleen and I were texting and she was talking about an experience that she just had, which she'll share in a second. And I just texted back and I was like, you know what? That is a peace that I think a lot of people don't recognize and don't have. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share your, share your story? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm coming up on my luteal phase of a very strange cycle for me. (laughs) My, my cycles are typically very regular and always have been. I mean, I am like 35 now, so, you know, I'm like approaching geriatric age very quickly. So it's normal that they might, which is insane, right? It's yep. just the Geriatric funniest word to me. <laughs> for pregnancy. So, you know, like my cycle's changing and whatnot is, this is about the time that that could start happening. So not crazy, but um, I, I'm i currently using the Clear Blue Monitor because I use it postpartum and I ended up like ordering way too many test sticks on subscribe and save. So I have a whole bunch <laughs> left. I was like, well, I'm going to finish these before I like stop using the monitor. So I was testing this cycle and had some like weird like spotting and whatnot, but then was not starting to read high by the time I would typically start reading high. So there was a day that, you know, in previous, like in most cycles, I would say, no, like we're not, like this is when we stop. But the monitor was reading low. I didn't see any mucus. So I was like, you know what? It's fine. Like we can use this day. So I used it. And then, yeah, like four days later, I, um, after reading all those, I get a peak. Woo! So I was like, oh, (laughs) that's interesting. I've never had that happen before, right? I normally have like a good, like, I don't know, four or five days of highs before I reach peak. So I went from low to peak. And the thought was, okay, when was that day that we just used? And like, would it be impossible for me to get pregnant? Like, not necessarily, based on like, I mean, again, there was no mucus or anything, so I'm not really suspecting, but I, regardless, in previous years, this would have been the point where I just begin panicking because Mm -hmm. here's like, I, I don't feel ready for another baby right now. 
Josephine, my youngest, is 15 months. I don't feel like I'm ready. With We've got, like, older kids who are, like, going through some really big adjustments and, you know, that I'm, I'm trying to have to, like, devote a lot of time to. Um, and so it's like, yeah, there's kind of a lot going on. I don't feel personally ready. In previous years, this would have sent me into a tailspin until I either could test or got my period. Like, like I just would have been in panic mode. And I sat down with this information in front of me, looking at my chart, and I was just like, you know what? If I, if it pregnancy results from this, it is so clear that God needed this baby here. And mm-hmm. so it's going to, it's fine. Like, it's fine. And I think that we, we are so used to looking at and approaching the idea of pregnancy and family planning and unplanned pregnancies from a really secular point of view, because it's just so pervasive in our culture, right? Like we have birth control so that we don't have these things happen ideally, right? Mm-hmm. We look at it as just biological. Like a, a man has sperm, a woman has an egg, and when the two come together, this is what happens. Like it's, it's just boiled down to pure biology, and we forget the divine hand that plays in Mm -hmm. every pregnancy whether you're a believer or not right so and every lack of a pregnancy too and every lack of a pregnancy exactly like my doctor is this awesome catholic OBGYN who i love and she has told me before that um, to never be afraid to 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 not deny my husband if it was needed in our marriage because you can provide an egg and your husband can provide a sperm but only god can create a baby Mm mm-hmm showing that like which was was such wisdom to me at the time that like yeah like i do think of this as purely biological Mm -hmm. right like it's just like oh well if i've got an egg and he's got a sperm and we bring them together like that's what happens but it's not necessarily Right. right like and that's because there is a divine hand that is played in every single pregnancy or lack thereof like God has a plan. He has a plan for our families. He has a plan for our lives. And just like Ellen said in the beginning, like he knows what we need for our ultimate holiness and purification and sanctity. And maybe it's a pregnancy. Maybe it's not. Right. So, you know, and we're not, I, I want to pause really quick before you go on. We're not trying yeah. to say that if you are suffering through either like infertility that is very hard right now or or an unplanned pregnancy that's very hard. We're not trying to say that your suffering is unmerited or or that you're not supposed to like feel. That's not what we mean. And in fact, that suffering is really really good because that is how we get grow closer to Christ. We grow closer to Christ in uniting our suffering with Christ crucified. And so and and that's that's in fact like that is our path to holiness is uniting that suffering. And that's what like the saints did so well is that any of the suffering that they had, they like welcomed it joyfully of like, yes. oh my gosh, like I just think of like Carlo Acutis. He was like, God, I want a highway to heaven. And then he got diagnosed with leukemia and he was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm going to heaven. Like, <laughs> like he that's was like phenomenal. excited. And, and he, I mean, he, he died like three or four days after his diagnosis. Like, I mean, it was really fast, but he was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Like I yeah. got, I got my, my prayer right now. I'm not saying that like you need to just joyfully dance every time you have a negative pregnancy test or, or a positive pregnancy test, depending right. on, on which area of this topic you're in, but we grow in holiness by uniting our suffering to our Lord. And in uniting our suffering, that is where the peace comes from that we're talking about. This peace that we should have of like, okay, this is what God has given me and it's not what I want. It's not, but God knows better. Yeah. And he and and I know that his divine hand is at work. Because what I, I think like going back to what Kathleen was kind of saying about like, you know, our culture has birth control so that, you know, we control the outcome of sex and, and so mm-hmm. that we don't have unplanned pregnancies that we don't want. Right. And then on the flip side, we've got like these insanely invasive fertility treatments so that we can control and have children when we want exactly, you know, regardless of the divine plan 
I mean, even still God's hand is at work. Right. But like, it's this element of control that we yeah. want. We think about our wants and needs as the same. Yeah. And as soon as I have a want for something, especially if it's, if it's a big want, if I really, really want something suddenly we're like, that is a need. And therefore yeah. I, I have to fulfill this need. And that's, that's not, that's not being human. That's not growing in holiness. So it's important to like separate our wants and needs, but then also like not be so black and white about children Mm -hmm. and the outcome of sex, right? Of just like, we're trying to avoid right now. So black and white, we are not going to have a kid. Yeah. Um, That's, that is not what, what we're called to. That's not marriage. That's not the, that's not the like, the call of marriage, like matrimony means matrimonia means the call to motherhood. Fun fact. (laughs) You love this one. (laughs) I do. I love this one. I don't think I've really talked about it on the podcast very much. No. Yeah. But like, think about other words that have that root matriarch. That is the, you know, the mother figure, the highest mother figure, right? matrimony is that same root word. It's, yes, it's not always a physical motherhood. And in fact, spiritual motherhood is, gosh, I don't want to go. This is a totally different topic. That's another, that's another podcast yeah, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about physical and spiritual motherhood. But you're, like you getting married is a call to motherhood and through the motherhood is a call to fatherhood because you can't have right. motherhood without fatherhood. So it's, it's implied in, in matrimonia, but I going back to what I was trying to say yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is that we, our culture is just this opinion of children and this opinion of control over the outcome of sex is so infused into us that no matter how much we want to call ourselves, you know, children of God and Catholics, like we still have this just, I don't know, like gross mindset that we can control the outcome of sex and we can't. We cannot. God has given us the beautiful gift of fertility awareness to understand how our bodies work. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we can control them. Yeah. Like we are spontaneous ovulators. Spontaneous ovulation means that there's no outside influence that causes the ovulation. It's our body that causes the ovulation inside. And so... There's nothing we can do to control ovulation. We try to, we can try to with birth control. We can try to with hormones. I mean, if you were like insane, you could try to with over-exercising or something like that. But control, I think it's, that is something that we as Christians have to let go of is trying to control every aspect, but particularly, I mean, what we're talking about in this episode is trying to control the outcome of sex because that's, that's not what God called us to. That's not the commandment that he gave our first parents, which is be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, right? He, nowhere in there did he say, Control the outcome of sex. Control how many kids you have. Um, You know, be careful about what you're doing, right? He said, no, come together freely, faithfully, fruitfully, fully. (laughs) One more in there. He said, look, unite. That is why a man leaves his mother and father and unites with his wife. That's what he told us to do is unite. And so we have to relinquish control a lot of times. Yeah. And we don't want to. We don't want to. No, we don't. <laughs> you know what? It's a really good opportunity to like embrace the prayer of Job. Ooh. Um, yeah. 
you know, like whether and regardless of your situation, right? Like whatever it is that's just not going as expected, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's like, and I and there is such, and I think that's why like this past cycle with all of its like craziness and you know, um, what has become just like this moment of peace because it's I finally after many many years started getting to this point where it is just like this constant recognition that that I this isn't just down to my husband and I right like Mm -hmm. this isn't there is a divine hand in all of this and there's like when you realize that and you start seeing it through that lens only that like none of this can happen without God's permission like there is just such a peace in whatever does happen. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you can say like again, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Like I know, Lord, that you will like this is for my good. This is for the good of my family. This is because there is a unique soul that you need here or because there are other things that you're asking me to focus on and do right now. Right? Like give me the grace to focus on them and to do them and blessed be your name. Yeah, I don't know. It's but it takes. I think it sort of takes some deconditioning. Um, yes, because I think that I mean, in my experience, anyway, from my very first pregnancy test test that I took and found out I was pregnant with my oldest when I was not expecting to be and did not want to be, like it was immediately like positive pregnancy test panic. Oh my gosh, and, same. Right? <laughs> Even and, though and we then, wanted. Like. Yeah, well, it's just like, it is, it's like this panic that like sets in. And I think that as you practice NFP through this lens of like achieving your family planning goals, that sort of becomes solidified that like, okay, I need to know if this is positive or not, right? Like, like it, did I mess up here? Like, is this going to be positive, right? And there's you know, this... You know what else is in there too like if you're if you're so focused on nfp Mm -hmm. with like fulfilling my family planning needs is yes i have made this decision and so now it's all on me to get it right yeah that's exactly right that adds in to the anxiety as well and it's like exactly it's not god is always going to be there like yes you were trying to achieve a pregnancy but god made that baby happen and exactly. like he's not just gonna mm-hmm. leave you <laughs> with the yeah. baby alone. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's that's true. But it is. It's like when you are looking through it through this biological lens and this lens of like, okay, this is the only tool I have to plan my family mm-hmm. to achieve my family planning goals, right? Like, then you're looking at like, oh, did I follow all the rules according to the book? What if I messed up? What if I, you know, and. And then it creates, and then you're taking that pregnancy test and you're like sitting there watching it like, oh my gosh. And you're just like counting down the days until you can even take the test, right? Like it's just all of this anxiety and this, and when you do that for years, right? Like it's, it sort of conditions you. Like when you're taking a pregnancy test, Mm -hmm. you like immediately start feeling this panic and it's like so sad. So I'm like. I mean, praising God that I have finally, after, I mean, 11 years of marriage, (laughs) gotten to this point where it's just like, you know what? It's in your hands, Lord. Like, whatever. It's going to be, do I feel personally ready? Like, would I choose to have a baby right now if I could? Not really, no. But if it's your will, then, like, blessed be your name. And, Mm -hmm. like, it's great, you know? So it takes... It's not just something that you can like flip a switch on. That's for sure. It does take some deconditioning and it does take some of those like anxious waiting for the lines to show up, you know, where while in that wait, you're just saying your will be done, Lord, your will be done, Lord, your will be done, Lord. Even when in entering into like entering into like sex with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's just like I'm not 100 percent convinced that today is a safe safe i put that in quotes right in day <laughs> right an infertile day exactly right so you know what lord i need to love my husband right now like our marriage needs this your will be done right mm-hmm. and just like the more you surrender in those moments the more the lord really shows up to alter your whole just your whole experience around it 
Absolutely. And that you can, yeah, really start just praising his name through it all, regardless of what the outcome is, and just being like, it's all going to be great. It's going to be fine. It's going to be hard, but yeah. it's going to be fine, you know, because this is his will, and therefore it's the best thing, and it's going to be good for me. Yeah, and I think this is something that that I've really just in the past couple of years really come around to. And and honestly, it's it's part of the reason why this podcast kind of um, took a turn about a year ago to really expand more into Catholic sexuality as a whole and talking about mm-hmm. sex and intimacy and less specifically focused on NFP because I recognized in myself that I had this very black and white opinion about family planning and I'm I am a rule follower and so it was just like if I'm trying to avoid I'm trying to avoid and if yeah. we're trying to achieve then then we are trying to achieve you know and yeah. we got to we got to utilize the best days you know and it's just like I didn't I heard about these people who were like oh I was just like whatever happens and I'm like I I couldn't ever um and I also had this opinion that like I would just get pregnant the second that like I didn't follow the rules and that that has really been changing in my heart a lot and just recognizing that like natural family planning is, is an incredible tool but i actually find so much more benefit in using my fertility awareness and understanding like my own self and how i'm going to react to situations mhm versus like the family planning side of it. I, I've like personally gotten yeah. a lot more benefit of that just kind of in like the past year. In and and what I mean is just like utilizing the different phases of my cycle to, you know, oh, this is a really good time to um, you know, work on this project uh, because I'm in that like pre-ovulatory phase and like have a lot of energy or knowing that in my luteal phase like I'm I'm a, I'm I have a short <laughs> fuse. Yeah. I have a shorter fuse yeah. and I really have to be careful yeah. or I can, I, I can really rip my kids, um, which is not good. I shouldn't be laughing about that, but yeah. you know, and just kind of recognizing like how, how best to kind of plan my day and, and, and life and, and just like, just recognizing the things that come up and how I'm going to react to those and, and just allowing allowing the knowledge of my fertility to exist, Mm -hmm. but not letting it dictate our entire intimate sex life. Yeah. Because I think that happens a lot. I feel like I see that a lot kind of in the NFP Facebook groups and things like that is that fertility awareness absolutely dictates Like it becomes a dictator. And that is where like the disdain of natural family planning comes and, and stuff like that. And, and obviously, you know, we're not, we're not really talking about like extreme cases of, of needing to avoid pregnancy for, um, you know, medical reasons, stuff like that. But in a way we are, um, because there, there needs to be a piece to it and we need to recognize that like, we, we truly, we cannot control the outcome of sex. Like sex is a unitive and procreative act. It is. Mm-hmm. It cannot not be that by its very yeah. nature, by the design of it. It is unitive and procreative. Regardless of if we're using a fertile or an infertile day. Yeah. Regardless mm-hmm. of if we are facing infertility. Right. Sex is a unitive and procreative act. Yeah. And we cannot take one of those away. We can we can attempt to utilize infertile days, but it's still a procreative act, no matter what. Right. In its nature, yeah. In its nature. And so, you know, I, I think and and I haven't personally been in one of these situations where it's been life threatening to try to avoid pregnancy, but a lot of times what I tell people is like, look, if it if it's truly life threatening to avoid pregnancy, then I think you really need to consider whether or not sex is a part of your marriage anymore because sex is a procreative act. And if it, I, you know, (laughs) and I, and that's hard. That is, that is a really big thing to discern. It's really big. And there are absolutely ways that you can still come together with your spouse, um, and have, you know, very, very high chances of 
only using infertile days. Um, And an instructor can work with you on that of just kind of only using phase three and things like that. But, but really, I mean, sex is unitive and procreative. If procreative Mm -hmm. is off the table, like very seriously off the table, then, you know, that that's what we say about using fertility awareness, right? If, if, having a baby is off the table, then sex is off the table when you're fertile. Yeah, That's when you, how yeah. it goes. And I don't, you know, we don't need to get too far into that. I feel like I'm going to get some, some backlash for that. Cause I said that <laughs> a little, little off the cuff, but I, I think these are the things that we really need to think about and just recognize that like our culture, the, the cultural mindset has seeped into us so much, especially those of us who are kind of in this range of like, under 40 Mm -hmm. like our parents went through the sexual revolution everything changed with the understanding of like what sex is quote for society in the sexual revolution i've had conversations with my mother about this of just like just the the mindset that was on college campuses and just just the things that just fundamentally changed like we think we think it's weird right now like It was weird. (laughs) Also in the late 60s, 70s, like it was weird. Yeah. (laughs) 80s, you know, 70s, 80s, you know. And so like we grew up with parents that even even if they were devoutly Catholic parents, mindset was was fundamentally shifted on like the purpose and meaning of sex. Yeah. And it it has just continued on that same trajectory as far as like our culture goes and the Catholic church has, has stood solid always, always and will forever say that sex is a unitive and procreative act. Right. But that's not what society says. And, and no matter how much we want to say that we, that, that hasn't influenced us, it has, it absolutely has influenced us. And we, we have to recognize that and like, bring that to prayer and ask Mm -hmm. God, like, wow, am I, what, you know, what am I trying to control here? Am I really recognizing like the, um, importance of this act? Just the fact that it's not, it's never just sex. It's never just sex. I hate when people say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean. (laughs) Um, it is, it's not ever just sex. And yeah, and and kind of bringing home again the 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 things that have sort of seeped into our own like belief systems, even as Catholics, but from a secular culture. Um, you know, we're I, I think I, I think of like all of my friends, right? Like my friends that I know who aren't really practicing or Catholic, and who just have their like one two two and a half kids. You know what I mean? And then it's like that's it. We either tie the tubes or we you know, get a vasectomy or we do, we do whatever, you know, it's like, what, like, why, why is that? Like, why are we so, I feel like when, when you're thinking of like, well, I'm open to a bigger family for me anyway, you sort of feel like a crazy person, you know, like when you're like around all of these other people who are having their two and a half children and then calling it quits. And I mean, how many times do I go out to a store? Oh my gosh. I went out with three of my kids the one day and someone was like oh my gosh you got your hands full i was like this is like half of them <laughs> they're like you're crazy like, well, you're like glutton for punishment and so, like all the comments that i get and like i don't even have like a big big family right like i right. have five kids you know but the comments are just so disparaging sometimes and make you feel like wow people notice me and they're noticing me in a light that is to them negative, mm-hmm. right? Like they're trying to cast this like negative light on me and it's, it's intimidating, you know? So, but it is, it's like, it's like, what is, what is happening that, you know, people are like, just like, yeah, no, we've got our two kids and we're, we're good. You know, it's like, how do it, it I, I don't know. It's something that I have to think about regularly and remind myself that like, those people are looking at this as biology, right? Mm-hmm. And like as children, as as like a commodity, right? Something that that they are they're allowed to choose how they want them and and when they want them, and and that's it. Versus the freedom 
that you experience in just handing your family over to God. And that's not to say, like, you have to be a providentialist. I mean, we've had this conversation on this podcast right. so many times, right? But it's it's being constantly open to the movement of the Holy Spirit by not making any permanent decisions such as sterilizations and whatnot, right? And then also by by regular, like, cyclical discernment every mm-hmm. cycle. Mm-hmm. Like, Lord, where are you calling us this month? You know, do you want us? And then, and then also being open to the times that you're like, no, I don't really want to have a baby, so I'm not going to use my fertile window this month. But then the Lord does something like a bunch of lows before you hit a peak, right? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. What's he trying to, is he trying to do something there? But again, if that happens, and like like I said, I don't think a pregnancy is going to result from this, but it's not impossible that it could. Yeah. And if it does, like I just get to have the peace of saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, like this is fine. It's not, I messed up. It's not, this isn't what I wanted. It's not like, it's not, oh my gosh, do I have to handle this? Right? Like there's like none of that. It's just like, blessed be the name of the Lord because this is not, this does not boil down to my husband and I. Yeah. You know, and it's, there's just such a freedom and a peace when you get to that point. And if you're not at that point, just beg God for it. Like take it to prayer and just beg him for the peace to just surrender your family in whatever way that means and in however he calls you to. Because in that surrender, like, it's, you know, it's like the, the definition of freedom is not being able to do what you want, but the not having, having the right to do what you want, but the right to do what you ought, mm-hmm. right? And, like, that's, that is, like, freedom when you can, yeah, just, like, hand it over even when it's not what you want and just yeah. feel this peace about it. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's all I right? got. Praise. Praise be Jesus. Praise be Jesus. <laughs> really quick. Don't go anywhere. I am about to share with you a coupon code that I am not sharing anywhere else than right here at the end of this episode. Right now, I am doing a Black Friday sale for the orgasm course for Catholic women. If you follow me on social media, you saw that I have a coupon code Black Friday that gets you $30 off of the course. Now, you listening right now, you get an extra special coupon code that is going to give you $40 off of the orgasm course for Catholic women. The coupon code is to the end. It is all one word, T-O-T-H-E-E-N-D, to the end, and that will get you $40 off of the orgasm course for Catholic women. That is a huge discount. That is the biggest discount I am going to be doing, and I am only offering that coupon code right here. So thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. Oh,